We will begin Mass this evening with hymn number 662, 662 from the hymn book. Can I invite you please to stand? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Welcome to our celebration of Mass this evening. Welcome if you join us online. Church celebrates today uh, the Feast of the Body and Blood of the Lord. We celebrate the possibility that Holy Eucharist gives us, and we celebrate that we have the opportunity to celebrate Holy Eucharist together. Like last week where we celebrated Trinity, on paper it looks like a theological concept, but uh, it's a reality about the nature of God. And similarly today, mystery of the Eucharist, like the mystery of the Trinity, not to be fully explained or understood, but to be lived and to be the opportunity for us to rejoice in the presence of God, his closeness to us, our communion with him, and indeed our communion with each other. So, conscious that we're called to a communion of love with each other and with God, we recognise our frailty, our failure, and we ask God's forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, 
O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament leave us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption. You who live and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how the Lord your God led you for forty years in the wilderness to humble you, to test you, and know your inmost heart, whether you would keep the commandments or not. He humbled you, he made you feel hunger, he fed you with manna, which neither you nor your fathers had known, to make you understand that man does not live on bread alone, but that man lives on everything that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Do not then forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who guided you through this vast and dreadful wilderness, a land of fiery serpents, scorpions, thirst, who in this waterless place brought you water from the hardest rock, who, in this wilderness, fed you with manna that your fathers had not known. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O praise the Lord, Jerusalem. O praise the Lord, Jerusalem. O praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Zion, praise your God. He has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed the children within you. O praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He established peace on your borders. He feeds you with finest wheat. He sends out his word to the earth and swiftly runs his command. O praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He makes his word known to Jacob, to Israel his laws and decrees. He has not dealt thus with other nations. He has not taught them his decrees. O praise the Lord, Jerusalem. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. The bread that we break is a communion with the body of Christ. The fact that there is only one loaf means that, though there are many of us, we form a single body because we all have a share in this one loaf. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I am the living bread which has come down from heaven, says the Lord. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Mm -hmm. 
Jesus said to the Jews, I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world. Then they started arguing with one another. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? They said. And Jesus replied, I tell you most solemnly, if you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life in you. Anyone who does eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life, and I shall raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me, and I live in him. Just as I, who am sent by the living Father, myself draw life from the Father, so whoever eats me will draw life from me. This is the bread come down from heaven, not like the bread our ancestors ate. They are dead. But anyone who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So I suspect you, like me, and I think it's kind of an age thing, the older you get, uh, the more bewildering it becomes and the faster the pace of technological change seems to occur. Um, we've seen extraordinary uh, developments maybe in communication media um, over a short period of time. And it's kind of hard to keep up. I, I, of course, I'm sure many of you do, use email uh, and text messages uh, and WhatsApps and, and, and things like that. But there comes a point <laughs> where I have to say I'm, I just don't understand the next step, the next developments, the, the follow through. It's Twitter is, the, is, is where my capacity to, to comprehend ends. Um, I, I understand it's a, a way of people communicating with companies and organisations, um, but I don't. I don't know kind of quite the mechanics of it and who signs up who for what. Um, and I think my problem is very, is very old-fashioned in the sense that I don't know where it is. Don't, I don't know where it's kept. <laughs> don't it exists somewhere outside of the ether. Um, so I'm, I'm just a wee bit unsure about Twitter. So I, I, it's the one thing I, I haven't signed up to that, that was kind of more mainstream. And uh, it, I know it's gone through its, uh, its trials of, of late. And that's made me glad that I don't, I'm, I'm not on the receiving end of those kind of messages. And I do my best with, with email, with, with text messages and with, with WhatsApps. Um, but it, it, it's maybe typical of the way we live our lives now. Um, I, I, I'm happy to drive my car, but um, apart from the rudimentary understanding I have of the internal combustion engine, which is you get a, you get a cylinder which is sealed, strong, you inject uh, a mixture of petrol and air and you spark, you light a spark and it causes a very minor explosion which drives a piston which turns a, uh, which, uh, which, which, which turns a, a wheel if you like, which drives the wheels. I get, I get, I get that but that's the limit of my understanding and I'm, I'm very happy to, to, to fly in an aeroplane somewhere nice um, but my understanding of aerodynamics is rudimentary. I do know that if you get air to flow over the top of a flat surface, like a wing, uh, faster than it flows under, then uh, it generates lift, uh, and that's how you get your plane off the ground. Um, but but how that actually works, and any other kind of route, any other kind of complex equations about how fast you have to be going to get off the ground and how fast you have to keep going not to fall out of the air, I don't get that. But I, I, I'm happy to use it. Um, and, and I think, I, I wonder if maybe that's, that's the secret of being happy with the gift of the body and blood of the Lord in Holy Eucharist. In Eucharist. My mother, God bless her, um, used to say to me, Do you know, I really don't understand how this works. <laughs> how, does the, how, how does the bread and wine become the body and blood of the Lord Jesus by the invocation of the Holy Spirit? And, and I said to her, well, when we talk about the mystery of the Eucharist, I think that's what we mean. We mean that we are happy to be part of the Eucharistic family of the Church, but the mechanics of how it works 
we don't need to know. Because we live as with Twitter, if you like, as with driving cars, as with flying in airplanes. We live in an age where not everything has to be intelligible, understood, to be useful. We live in an age of utility and not an age of intelligibility. So we're happy to use things that we don't fully understand. And that was my, uh, that was my poor offering to her uh, to sustain her great faith uh, and her devotion and, uh, and her devout reception of Holy Communion even until the last days of her life. Um, and it helps me too because I can't explain everything about the presence of Christ in the Eucharist. But I do know and I do believe that at supper with his disciples, Jesus took bread and he took wine and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them and he said, take this all of you and eat of it. This is my body given up for you. Take this all of you and drink from it. This is the blood of the covenant given for you and do this in memory of me. I, I get that. I understand it. and I'm happy to believe it and I'm happy to make it part of my life because in doing so, I do some important things. I, I respect the memory of the Lord Jesus. He says, do this in memory of me. So I do it in memory of him to make him present in my life so that I am prepared to make Christ present in the lives of others. Uh, it's my food for that journey of discipleship. It gives me nourishment, gives me encouragement. Uh, it gives me a sense of the closeness of God to me, his care for me, his desire to feed me, to sustain me, if you like. And it gives me a sense of communion um, with you, with whom I will receive communion this evening, and with the church, with whom I seek to live in communion. So I know, I understand, I get that it's about communion. I get also that it's about sacrifice, that Christ talks about giving of himself uh, in tonight's gospel, but in many other parts of our, uh, our gospel tradition, uh, that it's tied to the sacrifice of Christ on Calvary, the, the body given and the blood poured out. So I recognize that that's an encouragement to sacrifice, to recognition that uh, the co Christian life is costly. So I get communion, I get sacrifice, um, and I get memory uh, as a memorial of the Lord Jesus. Um, and the fourth thing I get is the context in which the Last Supper took place, which was a Passover meal, which recalls the covenant. It's about the covenant relationship that God has with his people. That God is committed to his people and asks his people to be committed to him. And that's one of the reasons why we are devoutly gathered uh, every weekend uh, to celebrate the Eucharist together. As the church says, this is a way in which we celebrate our covenant. It's a way in which we celebrate our communion with the Lord. It's a way in which we remember him and his gift to us. It's a way in which we celebrate our communion with God and with one another. And it's the way in which we invigorate ourselves for the self-sacrifice that is the Christian life. So I'm happy to make use of this gift of God without having to be able to write theological treatises on how it works absolutely. And those, if you like, those hinges of the meaning of the Eucharist in the life of the church sustain me sufficiently and give me enough food for thought to be going on with week to week so that I can rejoice as a member of the family of God in communion with, with all the other members of the family of God, particularly yourselves, that I can rejoice that God has a covenant relationship with me and with us. I can rejoice that uh, he sacrificed himself and asks me to do the same. And I can rejoice also that he gives me that memory of him, which I can relive uh, for him, for me, for us, and for the whole church. So, for a love of the Holy Eucharist that allows us to celebrate all those things without a necessarily perfect understanding of how all those things work for each other and ourselves, we pray this evening. To offer our prayers, we stand.
as the Church has been granted the privilege of this wonderful sacrament, may she be always faithful to the command of her Lord to do this in remembrance of him, keep her ministers and people reverent in celebrating and receiving Holy Communion. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. May the people of the world be brought to know and to honour the life that is offered in the bread and the wine. Give wisdom to all in authority, that they may rule as those who know that the true power comes from above. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Keep us, our families, friends and neighbours, faithful to the truth we have been taught and grateful for the graces we have received. May we and all who are near to us be sustained by the living bread. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Have mercy on those whose bodily hunger keeps them from caring for the things of the Spirit. Come to them in their need, relieve their suffering, and make their lives whole. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the departed who have been fed with the bread of life in this world and have gone to rest. Raise them up and grant them the promised eternal life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. To these our general intercessions, we add prayer for our own particular and local needs. We remember those who have asked us to pray for them, especially those whom we know to be in particular need at this time. Pray for those who join us online, particularly if they are unwell or caring for others, either within their families and friendship groups or as their vocation in life. Lord will bless, strengthen them, reward them for their generosity and goodness of heart. Pray for ourselves and for each other, called to live in communion with each other and with our God, that we may recognise the call to memory, to sacrifice, to covenant and to communion, that we, make up, that we may make all those things part of our daily lives, part of our daily choices, as a mark of our respect to the presence of Christ in the Holy Eucharist. We pray for our sick, particularly those we've been asked to remember in prayer, and for our dead, especially those who have died recently, particularly Father James Cunningham, and for those whose anniversaries occur about now, especially those we've been asked to remember in prayer. That they may all know the presence of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. God our Father, you give us through Christ the gift of the Holy Eucharist as food for our pilgrim journey as your people doing your work in your world. Be with us, nourish us, we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Let's pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all, his holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and of peace, whose signs are seen present in this mystery and in the offerings we here present. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, it is our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ Jesus our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his Apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished Lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful people by the sacred mystery, you make us holy, so that the whole human race, bounded in one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united in one bond of charity. And so, we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities foreshadowed here. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the angels and saints, cry out to you with one voice, as together with them we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the Jewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all who minister in your church. Remember our brothers and sisters fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, the Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to life eternal and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, glory and honour for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. For the coming of God's kingdom, we pray in the words the Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we will be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should be in under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Thank you, Barbara. This is my body, broken for you, bringing you wholeness, setting you free. Take it and eat it, and when you do, do it in love for me. This is my blood, poured out for you, Making you free, take it and drink it, and when you do, do it in love for me. Back to my Father, do not forget me, then you will see. I am still with you, and you will know, you are alive to me. If with my spirit, how you will grow, you are my branches, I am the tree. If you are faithful, Others will know you are alive in me. Love one another, I have loved you, and I have shown you how to be free. Serve one another, and when you do, do it in love for me. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share of your divine life which is foreshadowed by our reception of your precious body and blood. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your presence this evening. Thank you if you joined us online. Can I invite you to make yourself familiar in all the usual ways with the latest notices? As you'll see from those notices, um, Mass on Thursday evening of this week will be at 6.30 rather than at 6. That's to allow me to attend the reception of remains for Father James Cunningham in the cathedral at 6 on, on Thursday evening because I can't go to his funeral on Friday because we have Mass at St. Benedict's and I would like to, I'd like to go to a funeral of any of the priests of the diocese, but... Father James was um, was the the priest in the parish when I was growing up as a wee boy, and he was unfailingly kind um, and a very good example, um, and a very a very clever man. He taught all of us who who listened to him a great deal. So uh, pray for the repose of his soul and his memory. If anyone else wants to go to the cathedral.